Once your form is built, we're going to cover it with tracing paper. This requires some patience too, as you need to go step by step and shape by shape. We can't just cover the entire piece. We need to pick a section, glue it down, let that one dry before we can do the next one. So I recommend doing kind of a patchwork technique where you cover one, find one that's not connected. So if I wanted to do this one here, they're actually connected right there. So I'm going to do one over here and then maybe jump over here. Uh, this one's connected, so maybe I'll jump over here. I also need to think about one side versus the other. If I put paper on one side while that glue is wet, if I put it over, that might mess it up. So this glue is going to dry fairly quickly, but you do want to think about kind of working your way around each section. So I have some sections of tracing paper. I want to try not to waste too much. If I just use this whole piece for one section, I'll run out. So I'm going to look at these triangular shapes and cut something just a little bit bigger than that. Later on, I'm going to use a razor. I could use scissors. If all you have is scissors, that's fine. And considering you're at home working on these, uh, this step, normally I ask people to trim these really nice and clean before you do the next piece. But if you have some little pieces, if you want to try a different technique where you have ragged edges and you attach that one to the next piece, that's okay. So I'm going to start by changing this white glue just a little bit. This is white glue, school glue. It's not washable kind, it's glue wall. So keep that in mind. It's Elmer's glue wall. is the old fashioned kind of school glue. Um, so keep that in mind when you are mixing this up and letting it dry on your hands or on your clothes. It will not wash out of your clothes. I want a very small amount of glue just to show you how much. Here's a cap. I'm going to pour in how much water I have here. Just a little bit more, maybe a cap and a half. I'm going to mix this up. This is pretty thick, so using this as thick as it is would, would be too much. So I'm going to put about that same amount. So it's 50% glue, 50% water. Before you ever use a brush in any kind of paint or glue for that matter, I want to wet it and that will help that brush last. I've noticed I have some water right over here. I want to put my brush in water when I'm not using it. Otherwise, this brush will become a one-time brush, and I want to be able to use it over and over again. So that's still pretty thick. That's thicker than milk. Mix that up really well, and I think that's going to be pretty good. I could use it straight out of here, but it's going to be a little bit too strong and a little bit too thick for this. I want the water to absorb into the reeds and into the paper a little bit more. So I've got my glue ready to go. This brush will be for later on. I have keep my razors out of the way. If you have a razor at home, you can use for the next step for cutting the paper or even for cutting the paper in the beginning. That's fine, but I'm going to assume that you have a pair of scissors. I'm going to go ahead and do, just start with something really simple up here. And I've got a pencil. I'm going to try to leave marks off the paper, but I'm just going to mark how big that triangle is. It's about that long, so I want to go a little bit longer. These pencil marks will be cut off later on. You don't have to be super precise but I'm trying to make something that's at least as big as that form. So all of this extra will get cut off. Actually, before I do that, I do have a little bit of stray hot glue hairs, so I'm gonna to try to pick those off. When I built this, I made sure that each reed went to the next reed piece by piece. If you lay them one on top of each other like that, um, it can be harder to skin these things. So I did make sure that I put these all piece by piece. Not a big issue, but just something to think about as you're building it. Now that thing's going to lay down flat. I could try to skin this thing all at once, this shape here. It's two small shapes with this one line dividing that up. So it wouldn't be too hard. But some of these other shapes are going to be very difficult. You may be tempted to try to put an entire piece here. That's just too much. This is a hard enough piece to skin as, as is just this one little section in here or this one little section here. So just to get used to that, I am going to start with this small shape. I'm going to put plenty of glue on here. See, even though that I've, I've diluted it, 
halfway with water, there's still plenty of glue in that material. I do have an intersection right here, and so I am going to have a lot of pieces that come together there. So I want to try to cut off that paper, keep it nice and clean. I've got a few pencil marks, so I want to make sure they're not inside the shape. Put that down and make sure that the paper comes into complete contact with the reed. There's no bubbles, no gaps. You could even come back later on and paint some over the top. I'm not going to do that. It looks like I have total contact here, so I'm fairly confident. As long as I don't accidentally peel this off or pull it off as I'm working on the next part, I think I'm going to be okay. So again, I'm going to skip all of these pieces, everything that's connected to it. Even this one, I'm, I want to come over here, but that's too close. So I'm going to jump all the way over to here. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there for now. It'd be best if all of this glue dried and I came back to it to work on it another day or at least an hour or so from now. A few of the things that I cut, the glue was a little wet and I could have waited for it to dry. It's a lot easier to cut when it's dry. A word on using a razor. Um, this is a utility razor from a mat knife or a utility knife, one of these. If you're gonna use one, I assume that means you have one since I didn't provide one. Be very careful with them. I've taped this up. Uh, whenever I was cutting into, may have looked like my finger was very close, but I was always just a side of it. I was never cutting into my finger. A sharp blade is actually safest, a brand new blade, uh, but because it's sharp, that means it can also slice right through your skin. So if you're gonna use one, make sure you're comfortable with it. Always cut away. Uh, never put a lot of pressure into a knife but that was uh, sometimes nice to use, especially when the glue was dry. If the glue is wet, you're just pulling on it. Same thing with the scissors. 
And now there's a little bit of dried glue. Had I waited until the glue was dry, I wouldn't have had that issue. But now that there's all this junk on there, it's not working as well as it should since it's no longer a sharp blade. So what else is there to do? Uh, cover this entire thing. For this project, I would like you to co cover this 75 to 100%. You can leave a small area open, um, but 75% covered. So try to avoid the uh, open kite-like look. This should become a closed form so that you have an interior negative space so that this thing reads as an enclosed form with possibly one opening into it, like a shell has an opening to it. Um, it should stay non-representational. This should not try to be anything. Don't try to turn it into anything. Um, and one more added thing that I'd like you to consider at this point is combining this with the second project that you're going to work on, a linear project. So this is this project is about lines and shapes and enclosing those in order to make a non-representational form. But in the end, what you're going to emphasize are those lines, but the shapes on them as well. Whereas this project is going to stay completely open. More instructions on this later, but I would like you to think about one of three options. These two pieces connecting so that you have a really strong contrast with the paper form and the linear form. Um, one piece inside the other, that would require, so I'm bringing it up at this point, leaving a large opening inside this, almost like a flower with another form inside of it. It could be either way. It could be this piece inside of that one. Um, so one piece attached to the other piece, one piece inside of the other piece, and finally the third option would be one of these pieces holding the other one. In that one, it's most likely going to be this one. This will not have that much structure. It depends on, it depends on your, the way you build it. When we finish this, could, this could actually be quite strong. Um, but one becomes kind of like a tripod or a holder for the other one, or like a nest. So those three options. Together, one holding, or one sitting on top of the other.